Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil anbiya al mursaleen wa ala alihi wa sahabi ajma'een. Firstly, I'd like to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us the opportunity to benefit from this great program. I'd like to thank Ikna and the organizers and all the volunteers that are working behind the scenes to bring this program to us. And I'd like to thank all of the participants um, for watching and inshallah may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to benefit from what we are experiencing today. With that, we'll move to our second speaker in this session, um, Imam Siraj Wahaj, who's the Imam of America. And inshallah, his topic today is direct deposit, the time is now. Zakulak and Imam Siraj. Um, I want to say this first about the, the Javed Sadiq. I, I agree with him 100% of what he said. Um, but I'm going to um, introduce to you today a, um, a hadith that I consider one of the most remarkable narrations. It's so hard to say when the Prophet has said so many things, so many great things, you know, but there's something about this hadith, and I want you to keep in mind what uh, Brother Javid said about doing everything for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Martin Luther King Jr. is a man that I loved, was a Christian, um, but, a, but a man who spoke the truth. And one of the things that he said, life's most most important persistent question is what are we doing for others that's the key what are we doing for others allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he puts it in this way whatever you spend is for yourself we got to get that message. We, we have to get it. We have to understand it. We have to appreciate it. Everything you read in Sharia is about people doing things for the pleasure of Allah. Go to the 26th surah of the Quran, the uh, poets. All of these prophets, maybe in that surah five prophets beginning with Noah alayhi salat wa salam and Hud and Salih and Lut and Shu'ayb all of them say the same thing Javid was right again and that is we ain't looking for no thank you from you no reward from you no compensation from you no pay from you but they are looking to get paid and and our payment is due from the Lord of the worlds. That's what I want to get paid for. Everything we do. Right now, possibly Hajj will be voided this year. When you go on to Hajj, and the Prophet said, and an accepted pilgrimage, there's no reward except Jannah. People fight to be shaheed and they and they make salat and they fast in a month of Ramadan. Why are you fasting in a month of Ramadan? Why are you doing that? I want to get rewarded. I want to be forgiven my sins. Well, why are you praying at night? I want to be forgiven my sins. Why are you looking for Layla to Qadr? I want to be forgiven my sins. So Everybody understands that it has something to do with Allah, but yet I'm going to give you a remarkable hadith. You give me a minute. I'm going to I'm going to end with that with that hadith, but I want you to to to, to get this picture. Aisha radiallahu anha, you know the Prophet said, "Antum shuhada Allah fil ard, you are Allah's witnesses on earth." And indeed, Aisha radiallahu anha, because she's married to the Prophet, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. There are many things that he did in private that we would never know unless Aisha radiallahu anha told us. I'll give you one example. She said one night the Prophet sallallahu prayed so much that his feet began to crack. And she asked him the question, Ya Rasulullah, 
بما تسنو حل وقاد غفر الله لك ما تقدم من ذنبك وتأخر why you, why you doing that? Allah has already forgiven you not only your sins of your past but the sins of your future. Can you imagine that Allah has already forgiven any mistakes that you will make, any sins that you you may commit in the future? Allah has already forgiven it. And the Prophet ﷺ said something very interesting to his wife Aisha radiallahu anha. If Allah has given me this, this great gift, should not be should I not be a thankful servant? Motivation. What moves you? What makes you give? You want to do for the pleasure of Allah? You want Jannah? Of course. Now let me give you a hadith, a narration that might give you pause to think. This has this narration has two narrations. Both of them mutafukun alayh, it's Bukhari, Muslim hadith. And you know the hadith. You know we can we can quote a lot of hadith and what Abu Bakr did, Radulan, what Umar did, Radulan. But this hadith, Abu Bakr didn't do it, Umar didn't do it, Abdul Rahman ibn Auf didn't do it, the Prophet didn't do it, the Lay Salat was on the Prophets didn't do it. Sahaba didn't do it. Who did it? A rajulun. A man. We don't know. In the hadith, a bagi. A bagi, you know, I'm trying to be polite. It's a lady of the night, a uh, harlot, prostitute. In this hadith narrated, there's two narrations. First, this man. You know the hadith. He was on a journey and became very thirsty. And he saw a well. He went in the well and he quenched his thirst. But when he came out of the well, he saw a dog licking his tongue on the earth. And he said, this dog is suffering the same thing I'm suffering from. And went in the well and gave water to a dog. Who is he? Sahaba? No. Prophet? No. Who is he? Rajulun. A man. Gave water to a dog. What's his motive? He read some ayat of Quran? No. Hadith of the prophets? No. You know what he said? This dog is suffering from the same thing I'm suffering from. And he gave water to a dog. And the Prophet والسلام, said about this man three things. Shakaru Allah Lahu. Allah was grateful for what he did. Thankful. Gafara Lahu. And he forgave that man. Jannah. Jannah. And he entered him to Jannah. Allah was grateful. He forgave him his sin. And he entered into Jannah. Think about it. What motivated that man? There was no ayah from Quran. He didn't quote hadith. But there was something within him. And this Baghi, same thing, she saw a dog and she went in the in the well and took out a shoe, put water in the shoe, and came out of the well and gave the dog water. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet said that Allah forgave her. You know what that reminds me of? When the Prophet alayhi salat wa salam finished his night journey, he was very thirsty. And uh, he was offered some milk and some wine. In those days, wine wasn't prohibited. So the Prophet ﷺ, he chose the milk. 
listen to what Jibril alayhi salatu wasalam said, and I think this is the key going back to this hadith that I said. Remember what our brother Javid said was correct. Alhamdulillah alladhi hadaka lal fitra la akadda khamra gawat umatuka. Praise be to Allah who guided you, O Muhammad, to the fitra, to the very nature. Had you chosen the wine, your ummah would have gone astray. Fitra. That woman, the bagi, the prostitute, she wasn't thinking about no ayat. She wasn't thinking about, let me give water to this dog so that I can go to Jannah. Let me give water to the dog that Allah forgive me my sin. No. Was fitra. Something deep within. So I close my message today. It's very simple. Allah knows I love ikna. Allah knows I love ikna. I love mass, and isna, and mana, and muna, and care, and all of these Islamic organizations. Ikna is close to my heart. They do so much. Help in hand for relief and development. The work that they do around the world. Sure they do it for the pleasure of Allah. Of course they do. But you know what? Deep within, they feel for the people who suffer. I went to Kenya with help in hand for relief and development. I saw firsthand what they do. Ikna relief, I, I know what they do. I see what they do, the work that they do. Of course they do it for Allah. Of course, Allah give them Jannah, all of them. Allah forgive them sins, all of them. Yes, of course. There is something within to say, let me, let me help mankind. If Allah can forgive a prostitute, giving water to a dog, how much more so giving water and food to human beings to, to Muslims. Yes, I love all of those relief organizations, Islamic Relief, all of them. But today, we're talking about an institution called ITNA. This virus has stopped us from coming together collectively, but still, we must go on. And finally, you make a deposit. You make a deposit today for any aspect of Nikna. And you know, right now, brothers and sisters, we have to make a connection with this virus to the people. We have to make the connection to Allah. We gotta we gotta bring it back to Allah. Unless the people are not gonna get the message. So we have to do the Dawa work, gain peace. Ikna does it. You have all of these magnificent programs. And let me leave you with one thought. Most of you know by now, or many of you know by now, that I was a student at New York University, majored in mathematics. And I, I understand mathematics. I studied it. I learned it. I learned advanced mathematics, calculus, trigonometry, algebra, all of that. And I've come to the conclusion that what the Prophet ﷺ said is so deep. You heard it. You hear it at every fundraiser. Wealth is never decreased by giving sadaqah. Wallahi, it's true. Wallahi, I swear by Allah, it's true. And you know why you have to think about it? When you spend, you give a $1,000 for ICNA or ten thousand dollars for ICNA or hundred thousand dollars for ICNA, you gotta look at it as Allah said in Quran, as I mentioned, wa matun fikum in khairin for the anfusikum. Whatever uh, uh, you spend of good is for yourself. Don't look at it as spending. Rather, looking at it as a deposit. You go to the bank. You have a savings account. You put money in the savings account. You know, it's there for you. When you give sadaqah, 
give it today, no doubt. Don't be stingy. See, the proof of this, brothers and sisters, the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, Masu'ila Rasulullah sallallahu shay'in qattu faqala Allah. The Prophet never, ever said no. He never said no. People ask him, he never said no. Because he understands. It's only a deposit. You're going to get it back. And Allah is going to multiply it in such a way that you spend something so small, it will grow into the size of a mountain. That's the way it is. Proof of it. You know they say about athletes like Kobe Bryant and um, Michael Jordan, that they were so good. And they used to say they left it all on the field. What that mean? That means that they gave everything they could. A game, a basketball game, a football game, a baseball game. They left it out all on the field. They did everything they had. When you see the prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, literally, he gave everything that he had. You study Sahaba, they give what they had. You think about that. When the Prophet died, what did he have left? A million dollars? Two million dollars? What? No. His weapon, a white mule, and some land that they gave away in Sabaka. He left it all in the field. We too. We're going to die. Human beings die. Kudu nafsin die. Katun maut. We shall all taste of death. But institutions shall live on after us. Masjid Haram is there. Prophet's Masjid is there. Masjid Aqsa is there. We're gone. The people that built them are gone. But it's a lasting legacy. I ask Allah to bless Ikna to be around for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. Probably we're not going to be around to see it. But they will still be doing good. Still benefiting the people. Seeking a reward from Allah on the one hand. But on the other hand, doing it because it's right. It's the fitrah. It's in our very nature. May Allah bless you. Javid, may Allah bless you. I love you and love the work of Ikna and all of its components. Keep up the great work. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah Kari Mam Siraj for reminding us of this very important responsibility to strive with our wealth for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Please do try to make a donation. I, I really urge all of the participants on today's call go to ikna.org slash donate uh, or call 877-363-ICNA uh, and make a donation. Whether it be a one-time donation or, or whether it be a monthly donation, please try to do something. Uh, this is the striving that you can do to send forth something for your Akira, inshallah. Uh, mashallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep you on the path to choose you to do the work of the deen and for the community in America and beyond really to benefit from uh, what we've learned today, inshallah. So with that, um, we will move inshallah to conclude this session. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu wa la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfirullah wa atubu alayk.